Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you join us. My name is Tanja Gurdon and I'm the workforce coordinator here at Harold Washington College. And so in my role, I work um, closely with our departments to serve as a liaison um, with our partner programs, those specifically aligned to apprenticeship and internship opportunities. And so as we go through the presentation, um, I'll share a little bit more about my role and what I do here at the college. I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Kayla Godinez. I am the Workforce Success Coach here at Harold Washington College. Um, I work closely with Tanja um, with our workforce programs, apprenticeships and internships, um, supporting our partners and acting again as a liaison um, to all parties involved um, and really working with students um, to ensure success. Again, we'll share more about our roles um, throughout the presentation. And so before we get started, let's talk about who is Harold Washington. And so as many of you may know, we're part of the city colleges system. So we're one of seven city colleges of Chicago campuses. We're centrally located in downtown Chicago. Um, our center of excellence focuses in on business. So that aligns to our business and CTE programs, in addition to internship programs, um, continued education and professional services programs all guided um, with the principles of quality and innovation and partnership and access and equity. Our CTE programs are aimed to ensure that our students are prepared for the workplace. And some of our programs, as you see here, are, are really designed in the areas of business and IT. But I also want to call your attention to some new programs that have been recently developed in the areas of cybersecurity and software development. And so today we're going to just share some information with you about our work um, in the areas of partnerships along the lines of our industry partners and planning and how to create a win-win partnership, how we've been able to create a successful win-win partnership. We're going to share one of our models with you, the AI Apprenticeship Program. We're going to talk about some challenges and how we've taken those challenges and turned them into opportunities from the feedback and made some adjustments to better serve our partners. And then we're going to look at some best practices and take some time for some Q&A. Okay. So throughout the presentation, we may be just be asking you to engage with us um, either through questions in the chat, but then also with the annotate feature. Um, so if you haven't done so in one of these presentations, or if you haven't done so um, through, I'm sure many of our Zoom meetings throughout the last year, um, I just wanted to provide some instructions. Um, so you should see the bar at the top of your screen with the view options, and we'll most likely be using the stamp feature. Um, so I want to give everybody an opportunity real quickly to test that out. If you can just put a stamp on the screen so I can know you're with me. And if you um, aren't able to access this feature, you can definitely use the chat. So if you could do so. Anybody access the stamp button? Okay, that's okay. We'll, we can use the um, chat as we're moving forward. Is the stamp button called the stamp button? Oh, yes, it should say stamp. When you click the annotate feature, let me go back real quick. Thank you. Oops. So you should see this stamp option when you click view options and there should be an annotate button. And you should see stamp. No. I'm wondering if that's something that has had to be set up in our settings ahead of time. Okay. Um, well, thank you for your feedback. Um, we can definitely just use the chat throughout, or you can unmute yourself. Thanks, everyone. Um, so before we get started in our contact, we want to hear from you. What do you how would you define a win-win partnership? And again, you can use the chat or you can unmute yourself. Or what are you looking for in a win-win partnership? Can 
looking at someone say collaborative efforts and follow up. Um, both sides get some benefits, a good fit between employers and students. Again, something that benefits both parties. Awesome. Thank you everybody for that. Um, we came up with similar things. So um, we're all on the same page, which is great. Um, so when we think about a win-win partnership in our programs, we definitely think of something that offers equal benefits for each partner. Um, something that matches the mission and vision of each partner, making sure there's uh, alignment in the goals that we're working towards. Um, and then we're definitely looking for equal investment and commitment to the process um, in developing partnerships, knowing that sometimes um, there can be challenges in the road and you need equal commitment on both sides. So what is it like working with industry partners or in what ways have we been able to work with industry partners? Um, so there's four different buckets here that we've been able to work with industry partners in, um, in curriculum, on-campus engagement, workplace learning, and hiring. And these are the ways we currently and actively are working with um, our employer partners and, and working with new um, partners at the table. Um, so what does that look like in curriculum spaces? Um, it's working with our employer partners to develop new curriculum, um, partnering with um, our faculty here at the college, um, developing new industry certificate programs. Like Tanja mentioned, um, we've recently launched a new software um, and cybersecurity industry certificate. And so that is definitely in response to some of our feedback from our employer partners and our industry partners. Um, and then ongoing review of our curriculum to ensure that um, our students are, are leaving the college space ready to enter the workplace. We also partner through on-campus engagement. What does that look like? Um, we do industry expos. Um, and so for example, we have one of our CTU programs is a human resources certificate. So um, annually we've done um, a in human resources panel um, inviting employers to the campus to kind of share their work in that um, human resources space. We partner with our um, industry partners in soft skills and career workshops, um, working on interviewing skills, resume workshops. Um, we have an employer partner who does LinkedIn workshops with us. Um, and then definitely some in classroom um, speaking or lectures and, and um, sharing as well, really that career exposure. In the workplace learning space. Awesome. And so in addition to those first two levers, uh, we've been able to work with our employer partners around uh, workplace learning opportunities. And so we know over the last couple of years, there's been a really big push to make sure that our students are being exposed to various workplace um, learning opportunities. And so another opportunity is through internships. So we've been able to develop a subsidized internship um, program with one of our partners um, that allowed the employer to actually subsidize the small business um, that was willing to partner with us and have our students to join um, their company um, to complete a, I'm sorry, a summer internship. And so again, um, through making sure that you have partnerships that are willing to be flexible and be creative, um, it's important to be able to continue to offer um, new opportunities um, to your partner school or um, to your students. And so we've also been working on trying to develop a job shadowing um, model. Um, and that way our students will have the opportunity to go to one of our partner locations um, for the day. Um, and actually be able to shadow um, some of the staff at one of our partner agencies. And we've also, um, right just before the pandemic, we were actually really beginning to work um, strongly with having our students to um, attend some of our partner um, locations and take field trips. And so when we look at um, the next quadrant there for hiring, so working with your partners to make sure that they recognize the diverse population that you have at your institution. So at, um, within City Colleges of Chicago, specifically at Harold Washington, Harold Washington College, we have a diverse population of students. And so again, making sure that you're working with your partners to help identify specific needs for your students and allowing them to see um, that the work that you're doing in partnership um, is be, being able to support equitable hiring practices um, within their institution. 
Um, so we want to hear a little bit from you, given those different um, areas um, and recognizing a lot of these build off of each other um, throughout. Um, we've had opportunities where employers will start working with us in curriculum and that leads to internship opportunities and such. Um, but in what ways are you currently working um, with your industry partners? Um, and if you could just put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself, we just want to hear from you in what ways you're currently working with. Are there any current ways you're working with um, employer partners or industry partners in your area? We had someone um, put in internships, advisory councils, apprenticeships, uh, recruiting and career fairs. Awesome, thank you. In what ways, um, so I have another question for you. In what areas do you wanna strengthen your programs? or in what areas do you want to strengthen? Okay, we have some comments coming through here. I know it's late in the afternoon, guys, but I know you guys are doing stuff. Um, let's see, so before, for the pandemic, um, and this may have been the question before, taking students to the different programs, trades offered by the college, um, currently implementing the WIOA program through one of our local wraparound service organizations. I see a lot about wanting um, more partnership internships, allowing field trips again faculty recruitment and diversity. Um, we need to strengthen our numbers and in the integrated education and training programs. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for that feedback. It's really good to hear um, what areas you are, are working in and, and what areas you wanna strengthen as we're going through this presentation. Appreciate your engagement. Um, so somebody had mentioned this in the chat as well, um, but working with that collaborative advisory board, um, and Tanya's going to talk a little bit about how we work with our advisory board. Thank you, Kayla. So definitely another um, key ingredient in developing you know, a win-win partnership is through um, collaborating with your advisory board. So if you've been thinking about uh, whether or not you need an advisory board, um, I absolutely would say um, yes. You know, identifying a team member that focused specifically on employer engagement uh, would be a huge step in helping you to develop that advisory board. Here at um, here at Washington College, we, we meet with our advisory board members um, during our fall and spring semester, and we um, partner with them um, to help inform our program decisions. Um, this is a committee for us of our local business and educational professional partners that have become our strategic board again, to provide insight um, and provide um, input on standards on the local um, job market, um, as well as we work with them specifically um, to present new ideas about our programs, our challenges, and again, our opportunity um, for get engagement within our college. Um, we also follow up with our advisory board members um, on their feedback um, to help determine what type of changes um, we have made. Um, and this is another um, opportunity for you to work with your advisory board members um, in regards to your hiring process. So definitely, um, if you have an advisory board member um, that's interested in hiring one of your students, this is a, a definitely a correlation in, in regards to how you can be working uh, with your advisory board members. You can also be working with them um, to participate with some of your uh, work-based learning activities. They can become um, individuals that can participate in some of those classroom visits. Um, they also can um, support your career services areas um, and support some of those needs for mock interviews. And so the advisory board, again, is just that strategic um, group of folks um, that can help inform um, a lot of the business that you do uh, within your agency. 
And so we've talked about our advisory board. We've talked a little bit about what makes a win-win. And so we're going to spend some time um, talking about, you know, where to start. And so for us and the opportunities that have been presented to us, they, they started with that exploratory conversation. Um, the opportunity to talk about the employer and learn from them, what are their needs? And so in those conversations, it's gonna be someone within leadership, someone potentially in human resources, a frontline manager, as well as possibly a recent grad that's gonna be bringing a, a, a new initiative or an opportunity with, to you, or even sharing about maybe a gap in what they saw while they were maybe at your institution. But during those conversations, you want to make sure that you are being able to develop a strategy that is going to be a win-win um, for both your institution um, as well as for your employer partner. Um, now more than ever, I think we realize that more companies are really vested in working with an educational partner, um, specifically at the community college level. So it's been really exciting to see how folks are really open and, and willing and wanting to um, work with us and hire our students. And so what should you be asking? Um, you wanna make sure that those are collective goals and outcomes um, to help you um, develop that partnership. You wanna make sure that you're talking about what the needs are, what are the workforce needs, what are the academic needs and how you're able to accomplish those things. And you wanna also make sure that you're finding space to talk about the challenges and barriers of meeting those goals. So really taking the time out to develop a shared vision and really understanding who that employer partner is and what those needs are. And so in addition to talking to the employer partner, you wanna make sure that you're talking to your internal teams. And so what we've learned um, here at the college that in addition to working with the students and working with the employer partners, at the heart of the work that we do at this institution is our various student facing department. And so you wanna make sure that you are talking to those internal departments about those strategies. So whether it be from admissions to financial aid, to the business office, to advising, all of those departments play a key role in creating a win-win partnership. And so you wanna make sure that they're at the table and part of those discussions. Um, some of the things that we've been doing just in regards to planning out our programming, we've been looking at institutions like the Aspen Institute, um, and we've actually um, looked at their work in developing this particular slide. And so they've been a great resource to us um, and they have a great playbook. I mean, so if you have not, I would definitely recommend that you take a look at what they have to offer as you're looking to develop out those new partnerships. Next slide, please. And so let's talk a little bit in regards to planning. And so what are the, the logistics, the things that you need to be um, thinking about? So again, as I just mentioned, you know, identifying those key stake, stakeholders within your organization, as well as the employer partner, to be part of the planning and the implementation process. And you want to make sure that you're involving your internal partners early on in the process. You want to, you know, make sure and try that the mission and vision um, aligns to the goals and the outcomes of the partner. And again, working with your partner to create that strategy around curriculum alignment, recruitment and the project timeline. And so again, I, I can't say enough the importance of partnering with your internal stakeholders. Um, as I was thinking about, you know, who those individuals are, you know, it starts again from your academic affairs, your, your academic departments, your admissions, the business office, financial aid, the wellness center, security facilities. And I specifically want to take the opportunity to call them out because again, I, I don't think a lot of times we realize the, the level it might take um, to roll out any new project and a number of people who need to be involved and need to be aware of, of what you're doing uh, within your institution. And then on the um, external side, again, it's gonna be the leadership. You're gonna be working with the recruiters, you're gonna be working with the project team, as Kayla mentioned earlier, you're gonna be working with maybe a third party intermediary who's actually there to kind of support you in your initiative of meeting your, your retention goals. 
And so again, collaborating um, with all of these different areas uh, through the planning process is very, is very key and will help you to ensure that you're able to create a win-win program. And so let's take some time to talk through the project management um, process. So again, it, it starts again with the onboarding process and then it leads through into the implementation of the actual program. And so as part of the work that we've done here at the college, um, we've designed you know, regular check-ins with our employer partner um, to make sure that we're discussing uh, progress reports um, for our students that are part of those apprenticeships and internship opportunities. Um, in our work, so in my work specifically as the liaison, so I'm talking to our business office um, about making sure that the students' accounts are up to date, and I'm working with our employer partners to making sure that their program re requirements around billing are understood for our business office. Um, we're also working, you know, with academic departments to making sure that we're securing um, faculty um, ahead of time as part of that planning process um, to make sure that we have the right faculty in place um, for our programs. And we're also working with our Office of Instruction, again, all part of that managing of the, the program and making sure that it's successful. You want to make sure that you're working with your Office of Instruction around your scheduling. Um, in addition to that, academic support services is another key area um, that we found, especially where you have some of those gateway courses and courses that are, are a little bit more challenging for students. Um, we found that securing embedded tutors um, has been very successful for us and making sure that they um, are able to join some of our classes that we've seen over time with, where our students have struggled a little bit. And we've been also able to collaborate and have some um, tutoring sessions um, to make sure that our students are successful. Um, in addition, you know, scheduling those debriefs um, at the end of the program cycle to make sure that we're talking about um, updates and we are setting a standard around communicating uh, what those updates should look like. So making sure that there's a, a, a communication channel that allows for you to share feedback um, and discuss lessons learned. And so I'm going to turn it over to Kayla and she's going to share about one of our models. Thank you, Tanja. Um, so one of our program models is the Aon Apprenticeship. And I want to start off by sharing a video. Um, let me know if there's issues with the sound. Can you hear that? No. No. Yeah, you may have to yeah stop sharing and reshare and make sure to click that little button for computer audio. When I was at a hotel Better? working uh, as a bellman, I would see various yes, 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 people yes. coming in. Uh, They'd be wearing suits, going off to meetings. They seem to really enjoy themselves. And I always thought to myself that that's what I want to be. I want to do that. And now that I'm in the apprenticeship program, that's what I do. I get the opportunity to go every day into, the, into work and uh, truly be excited for what I'm doing. My name is Victor Gutierrez. I'm an apprentice at Aon. I work in the U.S. Risk Office. I've done this for a year now, so that's the halfway point of the two-year program. I've been given many responsibilities, and uh, I'm ha happy to know that I really am making uh, impact not only with my team, but in Aon itself. Here's Aon hired from all the places that most large companies typically hire from, the big universities around the Midwest. But several years ago, we started working with Harold Washington. First it was internships, and we helped them with their curriculum. And we realized that there was a huge pipeline of talent that we didn't really have access to. And you know, the irony for us is I can see Harold Washington College from my office, but we had never hired anyone there. Our students at City Colleges of Chicago, they're hungry, they're hardworking, 
they're entrepreneurial. Uh, they come with capabilities that uh, we see every day in our environments, but that we also know when they get into the companies like Aon and Accenture, they will thrive. Our apprentices do a variety of things, working mostly within our IT department, areas of communications, IT support, IT development. We really value the diverse skills and the life experiences that our apprentices are bringing to the organization. I see the city of Chicago embracing this apprenticeship model. I see so many more companies joining the apprenticeship network. I see thousands of students benefiting from apprenticeships across the city of Chicago in every single industry. What we've realized is not only can we have an impact on the lives of young people across Chicago, which I think is tremendous, but we're having an impact on our company. We are bringing in talent from across the city, from every neighborhood, and that is gonna make us a better and stronger company. Through this opportunity, I feel that I, I am becoming a, a better student, I'm becoming a better worker, I'm becoming a better father, a better husband. Uh, all, of, all around, I've really felt improvement in every aspect of my life. So that's just a little bit about um, one of our apprenticeship programs through Aon. Um, and so that showed an example from one of our students from our first cohort. Um, but here's a little bit of just the program itself. So all students in our AON program are on a two-year degree pathway with a, a degree in management and marketing, which is our a, one of our AAS degrees, which is one of our CTE programs. Um, throughout the two-year apprenticeship, students are working 40 hours a week, but that time includes both their work hours and their class um, schedule. So students get paid to go to class, um, which is great. Um, most of their classes are taken as a cohort, um, so they're really traveling together um, throughout the two years in dedicated class sections um, as an additional layer of support. That cohort model is really great. Um, we work with a third party program intermediary, which is One Million Degrees, um, and so through One Million Degrees, each um, we have a, a counselor dedicated to each cohort to really support with student success as they're traveling through this two-year program. Additionally, there are professional development sessions that are built in. Um, typically, these are monthly sessions. Um, they're really led by One Million Degrees, but we collaborate together on different um, topics that might be beneficial for our apprentices or different feedback we might be hearing from different um, stakeholders at the table. Um, we just launched our fifth cohort this fall um, with our Aon program, um, and we plan to graduate our fourth cohort um, at the end of this semester. Um, of the three completed program, our cohorts, um, of those who started, 79% completed the two-year apprenticeship, um, and 96% of them received full-time offers at the end of the two years. Um, so that's just a little bit about the program and, and um, our history with this program in particular. So what does this look like day to day for us? Because it's not just about um, securing some apprenticeship opportunities, but really making sure that students are successful and in a win-win partnership um, that it's uh, beneficial for all stakeholders at the table. So as Tanja mentioned, we work as a general liaison to help manage the needs of our partners at the table, but then also our students. Um, so we have bi-weekly or monthly meetings with the apprenticeship program team. So there's a dedicated team um, of individuals at Aon, um, myself and Tanja here at Harold Washington, and then our One Million Degree Counselor. Um, and so we'll meet bi-weekly or monthly um, to check in on student progress and get updates on how students are doing um, generally, but then also in the workplace and um, in the college space um, to see how we can best support. Um, my role in particular is checking in with students and our faculty. So I'm Personally, I meet more often with OMD as they're supporting students in the workspace and in the college space to really troubleshoot and support our students um, to be successful and um, meet their needs as they're going through the program. Um, we also collaborate with Aon on our recruitment efforts. So by doing classroom visits or information sessions here on campus. So as I mentioned before, we just launched our fifth cohort this fall. They started in the fall. Um, we started collaborating with Aon on recruitment efforts this last spring. Um, 
um, really um, doing several different classroom visits and then um, information sessions on campus and, and working with our career services team um, who support our students in the interviewing process. Um, so through, the, through this program, um, students will apply directly with Aon and go through the interviewing process that, there. And then we work with Aon in supporting with the onboarding process. So again, with our fifth cohort, this was our summer project um, is supporting students through our admissions process, um, working with our financial aid and business office to work through any um, registration holds. Um, working with our testing center um, to ensure that students can take the placement test, answer any questions they may have um, so they can meet the criteria for the AON program. And then after all of that, we work with our advising department to register the students in their cohort classes. Additionally, we'll work with advising to do a dedicated um, you know, orientation for students into the college space who are part of this AON program. Um, and then once they're in the program, um, we connect with our faculty and our students um, to get progress updates um, to see how they're doing with grades and homework and just feedback in general um, from our stakeholders here at the college. Um, and we communicate and debrief with our partners both internally and externally as we, we want to strengthen the program. We're always looking at in, for areas of improvement and how we can make a stronger program as we move on to our next cycle. But that is not without its challenges. Creating a win-win partnership, sometimes there can be bumps in the road. And so we just want to share a little bit about our experience um, and what some of our workarounds have been. Um, so some of the challenges that we have faced um, when trying to create a win-win partnership um, is some of it is scheduling. Our academic, working at an institution, um, we are aligned to an academic calendar. Um, and sometimes that doesn't always meet the needs of the employer partner or the third party partner in regards to um, when they need to start their programming. Um, there's also understanding the college space policies and procedure. As Tanja mentioned, um, Harold Washington is one of seven college campuses spread up across the city of Chicago. Um, and so, we report to a district office. So there's different layers in, in our college space and policies and procedures um, that sometimes can cause a challenge in creating a win-win partnership. Um, understanding our student population, we are advocates for our students um, here at Harold Washington. I, we believe we have um, an extremely talented and diverse um, pool of students here, um, but it's really being able to advocate for our students um, to our employer partners and, and everything that they have to offer. Understanding the um, capacity, um, their capacity, sometimes the employer partner, partner capacity, the third party partner capacity, or our college capacity, um, making sure that we are um, going to the next point, setting reasonable expectations, and sometimes that requires level setting. Um, and then with a lot of people at the table, with a lot of different stakeholders, we need to um, make sure that we're clear in our communication channels. And sometimes we have a lot of people at the table, there could be barriers um, and opportunities for miscommunication. Um, so those can be some challenges um, and some that we've experienced in creating different win-win partnerships. Um, but what we've been able to do and adjust when, we're, when we've um, faced some challenges or some workarounds we've had um, is um, make adjustments. Uh, and this is through feedback. Again, we really value the feedback we get from all stakeholders at the table, students, faculty, staff, um, our third party partners, our employers, everybody at the table. Um, that feedback is really valuable. So um, we've been able to change curriculum to meet the better needs of students. We've been able to develop customized training and courses to support our program model. Um, we've been able to do that through our continuing education department as an extra layer or in addition to some of the curriculum that's already offered in the programs. Um, we've been able to adjust our schedule to better meet the needs of the program, or we've been able to adjust the timeline. Um, sometimes we think a project will get off the ground a lot quicker than it does. And so um, it's just being transparent and honest about some of these changes and, and what we can do um, to work around um, to make it a better fit. And so I'm going to pass it back to Tanja, who's going to give some examples of from our various um, work-based learning programs here at Harold Washington. Thank you, Kayla. So as Kayla shared, um, definitely in any relationship, there's gonna be an opportunity um, for improvement. And so based on some of the feedback that we've received from our partners, we've been able to um, look at those challenges, turn them into opportunities um, and create that win-win partnership. And so one of our partners, Year Up, Year Up has a one-year program 
The students are here at Harold Washington College taking classes for the first six months of the program. The second half of the program, they're actually off on internship. And so what they've shared with us is that their program, their prior program did not best align um, with our admissions process and it did offer the flexibility that the program needed. And so our solution was we looked at the um, offerings that we had in our continuing education space and we transitioned their program from credit to continuing education. And what that did was it improved the admissions process and it removed those barriers. And it also allowed us to um, show some light on our continuing education programs by developing that customized curriculum that prepared their students to transition over to internship. Another example is with our McDonald's and Skills for Chicagoland's Future program. And so the opportunity that we had there is that their participants were struggling through um, the placement test. And so they were not clearing the college readiness and it was impacting the retention. And so the solution that we came up with was that we created a custom um, boot camp to better prepare their participants to move over into the college space. And what that did was it allowed the students the opportunity to level up their skills and retake the placement test, um, creating a win-win, um, not just for that partner, but for that student. And so with our AI model that we just shared, um, we received some feedback from the managers that many of the students were coming into the space struggling uh, with communication and technical skills at the beginning of the apprenticeship. And so we were able to realign the core curriculum and move courses that would have been later in the sequence earlier in the first um, semester that would help to improve those soft and hard skills. So we're talking about our business communication class and our data visualization class that focused in on helping the students to improve their Excel skills. And so this is our first semester actually piloting um, that particular model based off of that feedback. And so we'll be looking to hear from those managers um, during the spring semester on uh, what they saw um, from those students who um, are actually in those classes right now. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about best practices. And so, you know, for all of us, we've probably been spending some time over this last year and a half just talking about not just being in the pandemic, um, but talking about what are the best practices? What should we be doing um, differently? How should we create more equitable situations? Um, and how should we um, create work that's more sustainable? And so we've been talking a lot about creating um, systems um, that will better um, align our programs and our partnerships. And so making sure that we're creating timelines that are firm, um, making sure that we're recognizing and determining our capacities, making sure that we're working collaboratively with our internal stakeholders. So making sure that we're gaining their awareness, their expertise, and making sure that they're included in our planning and development process making sure that we are working um, with our third party partners around those wraparound services to help support our retention and also utilizing um, their feedback as another way to form our programs. Making sure that we're creating um, communication flows. So having those regular check-in meetings, making sure that there's opportunities um, to check in with the students as well as the employer partner and the faculty, making sure that all of the stakeholders are at the table and able to help um, us improve our processes. And so it's definitely important to make sure that there is a mutual understanding of all stakeholders that are involved in the process. Um, assessment is definitely important. So again, making sure that you're having those regular debriefs with your partners, both internal and external, after every milestone is very key to your success and making sure that those success stories are being shared. So making sure that you are able to get information from your employer partners on how your students are doing in a workplace and that you're sharing that information out with the entire community so that um, they too can share um, in the success of that student. Also, one thing that we actually, um, based off of some feedback from our recent recruitment cycle, um, with the AON Apprenticeship Program, we do plan to implement a boot camp to support college readiness. Um, what we found is that many of the, the students who were um, attempting to participate and um, be 
uh, considered for the program were not as successful um, on the math side of the placement test. So they were doing very well in English, um, but they were struggling after several attempts of taking the math placement test. So we plan to implement a math boot camp as part of our uh, recruitment process for our apprenticeship programs to give our students their best um, opportunities to be considered for these programs. So those are our kind of takeaways. Um, are there any questions? And if anyone has questions, feel free to either use the chat feature to type those in, or if you have a working microphone and you'd like, you can unmute yourself and ask your question that way. did have one question come in. Um, first off, one comment saying, what a cool program. And then <laughs> asking how the cohorts navigate remote working, especially during the pandemic. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something um, definitely that we have been working with our partners on. Um, and actually was a question in regards of starting this new cohort. Um, and so students in that cohort, just to get more context, are working remotely, um, but then they do have one in-person class. Um, so on the schedule, students typically have all day classes on Fridays. And so one of those Friday classes is in person. Um, so that is like the one a point that we get to have them in person and kind of add a little bit of an extra structure, but it's definitely thinking about different ways to support them. Um, we've been doing different surveys and I'm actually planning to send another survey out to students to really check in on how um, students are doing to get their feedback. Um, so I guess the best answer is the constant communication with the students is really kind of um, leading that conversation and, and how we build out additional supports as we're brainstorming ways to support them in the remote environment. Did that answer your question? I talked a lot. <laughs> awesome. And, and Bianca, I do wanna just add to it is that um, our, our campus, um, just like I can imagine many, many of yours um, had to pivot rather quickly um, when we went into um, that remote environment back in March. And so it, it really required, um, as Kayla mentioned, um, us to um, survey the students and stay into communication and work closely with our um, One Million Degrees intermediary and our employer partner to identify what was the resources that our students would need to be successful in the workplace. Um, you know, the thing about the apprenticeship programs and the fact that they're working um, as part of the benefit um, is that Aon provides the students um, with a laptop. And so that was not a resource that here at the college we had to make sure that the students had, um, like in, in many other situations. So it does go back to making sure that you are in communication with the employer partner, and in this case, the third party intermediary to identify what those resource needs um, may look like. And just additionally to, sorry, keep going back and forth, but um, you know, I think those are conversations that we're ongoing have, especially collaborating with our career services department in the future, as I know a lot of industry employers um, have talked about keeping this hybrid type schedule. Um, so how do we incorporate, what is that gonna look like in regards of supporting our students with some soft skills and transitioning to what might be this new normal of um, working from home. Um, so those are ongoing conversations and I'm sure we can address that more with our advisory board and other employer partners um, to get their feedback as um, we're starting this new cohort remotely. Any other questions? Does your program set up different bridges or ICAPs to also help along with this? And, and just to, um, to clarify, um, when you say bridges, are you speaking more from a point of a pre-apprenticeship program as a gateway into um, the apprenticeship model? 
Yeah, some some I know colleges set up like a bridge course to see if this is uh, something the students are interested in before they take the next step. So it's kind of like a pre class to introduce whether it's something with nursing or mechanics, um, you know, along those lines, um, just yeah. again, to see if that's an interest for them. Absolutely. And so this particular model um, does not include a, a bridge program. However, um, as part of our debrief, one of the takeaways was because we saw um, so many candidates that were not successful with the math placement test, we're actually considering, um, I would say maybe that bridge model or that pre-apprenticeship model um, that will help to kind of better prepare students um, before they transition over into the apprenticeship program. And additionally, something that's been developed um, recently and, and working with Aon, um, and they really taken the lead on this, is um, working with a, another partner or um, a company to develop an online platform that works through some day to day tasks with the Aon apprenticeship. And so, really pushing that out in our recruitment cycle to have students um, go through those modules online to see if this is the right fit. Um, in other employer um, partnerships, we launched a new opportunity last spring. Um, and with them, we did classroom visit as part of the recruitment cycle, but then they did a two day boot camp as well. And that was kind of a bridge to see if students to get more deep into kind of what the work would be in the apprenticeship program um, as like a transition into the next steps. So those are some different ways um, we've come at it. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great question. Any other questions? We do have a lot of com comments coming in about um, great info, um, great info on how to start employment partnerships. And then we had another comment to come in. It would be so great if we could have something like this with individuals in custody. For those who are getting their college education, it would be such a benefit for their transition. I agree with that, Marsha. That is definitely a, a great point. Um, I did actually uh, make connection um, with one of the workforce agencies um, over the summer who's working on a transitional program for individuals um, who are currently um, incarcerated. Um, so definitely keeping this in mind. Um, definitely, if you wanna put your institution in a chat, we'd love to follow up with you if something does um, real, you know, materialize with that. Um, and just in addition to that, I know that's something that we've talked, we're partnering with a different, um, Third party company, it's not an employer, um, but they have different programming and um, something that's been identified as an arts entrepreneurship program um, for individuals who had experience in, in our justice system. And so that's something that we are working to develop out this academic year. Um, so yeah, def finding different opportunities to meet their needs. Um, I'm excited about that opportunity, but I definitely agree. Anything else? Any other questions? So we're, we've definitely been excited to be able to share our information with you and actually get your feedback on um, our programming and the work that you've been doing. Um, definitely, if you have any other questions, feel free to place those in the chat. Um, our information um, is here. Definitely feel free to reach out to us directly. We welcome the opportunity. Um, to collaborate with you. Again, developing um, a win-win partnership um, is at every level. Um, and so we, we welcome the opportunity to um, engage with you around this work in the, in the near future. I just wanna echo that. Thank you um, for your time this um, afternoon on a late Thursday um, and then your engagement. Um, really excited and hopefully we can connect more in the future. Okay, thank you so much everyone for attending our Creating a Win-Win Through Partner Integration with Tanja and Kayla. Great information. Thank you ladies for